So I think this looks like a good place to set up my base camp. So I'm just down uh, decommissioned logging routes. Gives me easy access to areas that normally would be fairly difficult. As you can see, the woods are level terrain as they call it on a map, but that stuff's thick to plow through if you got a 40, 50 pound bag with you. So I find the decommissioned logging roads make it easier for me to just kind of get into more remote areas and that kind of stuff. But I think that uh, this area will be a good one to set camp up in. So I'll throw out my bag and that kind of stuff and we'll get it going. So like I say, just gonna strap up the bag here, get that up off. You might hear some vehicle noise in the background. There's still logging trucks that are out on the main lines. So if you hear that, you know, paint no mind. They don't go into this area specific, but they do use the main through fare. So to hang up my bag, I've got a six to eight foot hank of rope with a loop tied into the one end. I've showed this in lots of previous videos. Simply just wrap it around the tree. Feed the tag end through the loop. And that way I'm cinched onto the tree. I'm gonna form a marlin spike hitch now. Feed the toggle, which is just a piece of wood that I broke off of this same tree. Feed that through. I'm gonna take the handle on the top of my bag. I'm just gonna feed that wooden toggle through. Make sure that I'm sitting on the cordage and that my toggle's on there good. And my now, my bag is successfully hanging up off the ground where it's not gonna get as wet. So with the trees that are in the area that I'm in, they've got a lot of dead branches that are on the lower parts that are relatively straight sticks. I need three of those, six to eight foot. I'm just gonna whip together my tripod to get my camera up to eye height. So I'll just harvest off three of those. This one's a good long one. So really all I want to do here is just kind of rough clean these up. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just make sure that I get off all the little bits that would snag on things. Doesn't have to be super smooth or any of that business. And normally for my measurements, I take a pretty primitive approach. I just sit back and say, yeah, I'm about that tall. Oh. <laughs> That's the length I'm going to need. I need to go and harvest off uh, two more that are pretty well the same thing. So I'll cut back once that's completed. Okay, so I've got my three sticks cleaned up now. I just had to do the exact same process to the other two sticks, nothing complicated. And the forest around here has tons of the dead branches that are on the lower size. So it's easy to gather these resources. So I've got a 28 inch uh, length of rope that's been tied together into a loop with a fisherman's knot. I double that up on itself. Take my three pieces of wood. I put that doubled up loop of rope over top of all three of them. Slide it down about four or five inches, give or take. And then I take the middle branch as they lay side by each, and I just twist that middle branch and start to rotate it. And I do that over and over and over again until that loop of rope starts to really tighten up on itself. So quite often you get two or three turns. It all depends on the diameter you are at the top part, but it gives me my tripod now. I should be able to successfully put my camera on the top and have it up at eye height now. So as, as you can see, that loop just kind of tightens in on itself. 
gives the tension to the lashings and that way the tripod is just kind of strapped together. Just thought I'd stop and show a groovy little mushroom colony growing on the uh, stump that I decided to set up camp near. And this part's probably the thickest. That's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to put up a really high ridge line again in this episode for the example of the shelter I want to do. So I'm going to hook onto this tree right here, and I'm going to hook onto the same tree that my bag is hanging on. And I'm going to hook those on about seven and a half, eight foot off the ground on both trees. Okay, so like I say, I've got a large hank of rope, or I've got a large loop tied with an overhand knot loop in the one end. I'm just going to simply come up and try not to poke my eye out. <laughs> I'm going to come up and uh, wrap that around the tree. I want to be out on this side. And I just want to take that large loop, feed my hank of rope through it, and now I'm strapped onto that side and I'll run over to the other tree now. Now on my ridge line, I normally leave pre-attached a couple prusik loops. So they're sitting on the line. On this line, I've got three of them. I've pushed two out to be used with the shelter itself. And I've got another one further down the line here. And this one I'll use to tie off to the tree. So I'll set the camera up on a slightly different angle here and show you exactly how I strap on to this side. Okay, so I'm going to just take my ridge line. I'm going to come around. I'm lucky because the way that this is positioned, there's kind of a natural little hill that I can stand on. Makes it easier to get the ridge line up nice and high. And my hanka rope all came loose, unfortunately. But not a showstopper by any means. But I'm going to wrap this around the tree. I mean, there's little nubs and things on the tree they can actually help you get it to hold on up nice and high without having to kind of fiddle about too much so now i'm going to take that end of the ridge line and feed it through the prosthetic so i'll change cameras again and show you that in detail so now that this line's come around the tree i'm going to take this now and that prosthetic loop i have on there the third one if you will i'm just going to feed the remainder of the ridge line rope through that prusik loop and I'm gonna get that to be used like a trucker's hitch where I can apply tension to the line and I probably have to stand up there to even get that knot tied but uh, I'll shift angles again and see if I can get that knot tied up on the camera well done well we gotta kind of get up on that hill again so really the thinking really is i'm just gonna use that prosec to apply leverage i want this line to be good and stiff have a lot of tension to it and then i just kind of pinch the two of them together form a loop and then just pull the ridge line back on itself a bit to form a half inch. It kind of locks that line now. I'm just going to grab a stick. I'll break one off this tree here and feed that through the loop and then just pull back on the remainder of the ridge line just to kind of lock that half inch in place and that way I know it's not going to slip. Okay, so the ridge line's up now. As you can see, using the prusik loop to do the uh, trucker's hitch. I did that just uh, as an easy way to apply a lot of tension to this line. I find the trucker's hitch is probably one of the strongest hitches because you get to take the advantage of uh, leverage by uh, using the loop to kind of pull against itself. So these two prusiks I'll adjust later on for the shelter. 
and that way I can strap up the tarp to it. And as you can see on this end, where I just looped around the tree and made sure I kind of set it on the upper part above that branch, it just uh, did a similar thing on the other side. It ensures that the rope isn't going to come sliding down the tree in any way, shape or form. You know, you can use those branches to your advantage that way. But either way, I say ridge lines up and it's extremely taut. So I'm happy about that. I'm just going to stop for five minutes and then I'll move on to the tarp part. So in the yellow bag I've got on the underside of my uh, backpack there, I've got a 10 by 13 foot AquaQuest Defender King camo tarp. I'll be using that for the shelter example. So I'm just going to pull that out in my tent pegs and kind of get that ready for the next scenes. Okay, so I've got my tent pegs and my tarp out now. I'll just set that over there. So the first order of business that I'm going to want to do is you know, get my tarp out. I want to spread it out flat. so that it's you know, kind of all nice and square on the ground. And I want to have it that uh, one of the 10 foot sides lines up directly with the ridge line. So I'm just going to cut scenes and set it up and I'll come back. So hopefully the camera's picking this up good, but uh, I've got my ridge line here. And now I've lined up my 10 foot side of my tarp with the camo side facing down, lined up directly under the ridge line. My thinking really is the first tie out in from the corner here, I'm gonna peg that down to the ground and I'm gonna do so with a 15, 20 foot guy line. And I'm gonna peg that uh, tent peg right into the earth, pull in. I'm just going to take the loop of that guy line, hook it onto the tent peg. I'm going to set that tent peg in through the tie out and drive it fully into the earth. So, hopefully, the camera's picking this up good, but uh, I've got my ridge line here. And now I've lined up my 10 foot side of my tarp with the camo side facing down, lined up directly under the ridge line. My thinking really is the first tie out in from the corner here, I'm gonna peg that down to the ground and I'm gonna do so with a 15, 20 foot guy line. And I'm gonna peg that uh, tent peg right into the earth, pull in. I'm just going to take the loop of that guy line, hook it onto the tent peg. I'm going to set that tent peg in through the tie out and drive it fully into the earth. So now I'm going to take my rock. And another tent peg, I'm going to come out to this corner point and I'm going to pull that taut and I'm going to tent peg this down. But I don't want this to be tent pegged all the way down. I want it to still stick up a bit. So I won't hammer that all the way in quite yet. I then want to turn around and take that guy line that I tied off to that point in one from this corner. I want to run that across. And on that guy line, I've got a Prusik loop sitting on that guy line. I want to take that, I've got two actually, but I'm going to take that I'm going to hook it on 
to that tent peg and apply a bit of tension to it. I don't want it super tight. I'll tighten it up as we go. So now I'm just going to take another tent peg and my rock. And I'm going to come back over to this corner now. I want the hook part of my tent peg facing away from the center of the tarp setup. And I want to pull both sides to the peg that's tied out one in and to that corner. I want to pull them both taut and then I want to set this tent peg in. And with this one, I don't want to drive it into the earth all the way either. I just want to be partially in. So I'll leave a bit of room there to do other things in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to explain this part out because this is a little bit kind of on the tricky side. So there's a corner back here and there's the center tie out here. I'm going to take both of those and I'm going to bring them over and hook them onto the tie out in that corner there. Okay, so like I say, this corner is going to end up coming back over this way. And so is the center tie out. So I'm going to take the center tie out first off. I'm just going to hook that onto that tent peg that was on the corner. Then I'm going to take the corner, I'm going to bring it over. And I'm going to kind of wrap it back on itself. As such, and I'm going to hook that onto the tent peg as well. Because later on, what's going to end up happening is this tie out that was halfway between the center and the corner is going to get tied out on this side. So I'll try to show this from a different angle just to make sure it's kind of crystal clear. So the halfway point tie out was just hooked onto that tent peg as it was brought back over to itself. Then I'll just slide this back off again. The corner tent peg that was pulled over, I tuck it back in underneath itself and kind of bring it back and hook it onto that same tent peg. And normally there's a tie out that sits halfway between the halfway point on the tarp and the corner. And that tie out is right here and that's going to be pegged down to the earth at, at a point in a future point. So now that tent peg that's right here, I can drive that fully into the earth. Okay, so now that only leaves one last corner, which is right here, that was in the early ons, sitting way over here on the other side. I'm gonna take this corner now. <coughs> I'm gonna take this corner and kind of hook it in on itself and hook that onto the first tie out that was back in the front. I think my tie out, oh yeah, my tent peg just loosened up there. So I'll have to tighten that down. So you can see I've had to improv things of the tent peg that was sitting in the center here, the gravel, uh, the dirt I'm into, the ground I'm into, is uh, really gravelly. And even though that, that tent peg was fully into the earth, because this was an old logging road, the earth itself wasn't that firm. So I just set a really heavy, large stone right on top of that tent peg in the back to ensure that it doesn't come up. Just a little bushcraft improv, if you will. <laughs> okay, so the next step, I'm just gonna put on a glove kind of trash my hands a bit using that stone as a hammer for the tent pegs but uh, I'm gonna grab another tent peg and my trusty stone now with this corner here this is the back wall of the shelter now so with this just like I did earlier I'm gonna attach a 15 to 20 foot long I'm going to attach a 15 to 20 foot long uh, guy line that has a prussic loop tied onto it. 
So just kind of get that ready now. There's my prosic. I'll slide that further down the line. And I'm just going to have to uh, break the back of this knot. Hold on. And make the eye a little bigger. Just so I can get it onto this tent peg easy. Okay. So, just want to hook on the loop of that guy line. And like I say, I'm going to turn around and just feed the tent peg right through that tie-out point. Pull it taut in both directions. So, I want it taut along this line and I want it taut along that line. I'm just going to peg that down. Now this guy line is going to get fed through, because we kind of folded it back on itself, it's going to get fed through that little opening here. And it's going to get pulled all the way along, back up, and where we attach the first prusik, I'm going to hook the prusik loop that's on that guy line on and apply a bit of tension to that as well. Okay. So this is this part's a little bit awkward but so i've connected on that back corner now and i've got the guy line running a little bit on the inside i'm just going to lift up the front center here i'm going to kind of push into it and go get my guy line Like I say, pull that guy line through now. The prosthetics on the line. This corner or this uh, tent peg here, where things were tied down originally earlier in the video. I'm gonna slide my prosthetic and apply tension. And now I'm gonna want to peg this one fully down to the earth. Okay, so we've got all the pegging down and that kind of stuff dealt with. Now, running down the center line of my tarp, I've got a tie out right in the middle. I'm going to take that tie out, just loosen it up a bit. And with this tie out, I'm going to attach on a Marlin spike hitch. So I'll just kind of set that back a bit. I'm going to roll it over on itself, reach through, open it up sit in a stick that I have and kind of lock on that toggle. Now this toggle is going to be used to hook onto the prusik line up on the ridge line and used to apply tension and lift this whole shelter up. So like I say, I just take that point now, lift it up, let the air get into it. It will take a second for it to kind of take the pressure. Now I've got this prusik line sitting on the ridge line. I need to move it a bit. I'm going to take that prusik, I'm going to hook the toggle on, and now it's kind of locked and set. I'm going to use that to apply tension. Now you see that the shelter still is very slack. There's a few other things we got to do before the shelter is 100% finished, but we're getting very close. Okay, so you can see now this shelter still has a fair bit of sag to it. So there's these tile points that exist along this main ridge line on the AquaQuest Defender King Camo tarps. So what I'm going to do, I've got a uh, six to eight foot hanker rope. And if you've watched previous videos, I use these all the time. I'm going to take one of these, it's just a, a six to eight foot length of rope with a loop on one end. I'm going to take the tie out here and I'm going to just hook the loop through 
and then I'm going to feed the tag into the line back onto itself and that way I'm strapped on to that tie out point with a piece of cordage as you can see I'm on now I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side where I'm going to put a marlin spike hitch so I'll just grab a piece of wood here I'm going to put a marlin spike hitch figure out roughly where I need it I'm going to put a marlin spike hitch on this tie out point now I'm going to lift that up and hook it onto the prusik that's on the line just adjust the prusik a little make sure that I'm on the cordage and not on the wood now I'm just going to slide that prusik along to give it a bit of extra tension and you can see it kind of gives more of a rigidity and more head space in the back side of this shelter so you can see with the shelter at this point in time, the walls still have a bit of sag to them, which will remedy in a couple different ways. So I plan on putting a stick in that'll be set into the ground here and go up to here and kind of push that up so that this all stays taut. But the walls, I'm going to use one of my 28 inch lengths of uh, cordage where I've just tied it in a little loop with a fisherman's knot and I'm going to use a cone. And I'm going to show how you can quickly and easily do improvised tie out points on your tarp. So I plan on attaching one roughly right in this area and I'll uh, give detail of exactly how that's done. So one of the key things that I'm going to have to do is with this loop now, I'm going to make sure that the knot's kind of off centered so it's not sitting right on the end. I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring it down on itself, kind of reach my fingers through and open it up. And I'm going to want to kind of have those two together. I'm going to take the cone, push it from the back side of the tarp so that I can kind of hook it on and then just cinch it down with this lark's head knot to kind of lock it in place. Okay, so like I say, I just kind of make sure that that knot is offset a little bit. I take this end and I bring it onto itself, reach through those two holes there and kind of Turn it sideways and open it up so it's just a ring. Then I'm going to take that cone, I'm going to reach to the inside of the shelter and figure out roughly where I want that cone to sit. So I'm just kind of pinch it with my fingers so that it's being held. Then I'm going to take that loop of the lark's head that I made with the loop of cordage and then I'm just going to kind of cinch down on it a bit. By doing that, it now gives me a point where I've got a loop that I can tie off and apply tension. You can set these pretty well anywhere on a tarp that you choose. So like I say, I'll just kind of give a close up of that. So you can see there's the cone where it was just kind of pushed. And then that loop was just hooked on with a lark head knot, lark's head knot. And that way I can tie off and apply tension and just pull it out at that point. It's easy enough. If you don't like exactly where it is, you can just adjust it anywhere on that tarp and set it exactly as you need it to be. So, and you'll see here, so now I'll do the exact same thing on this side. And like I say, I just take that loop, offset the knot a little bit, just take that loop, bring it down onto itself, kind of open it up, pinch it. So I've got a kind of cinching loop. It's a lark's head knot I've created by doing that. I'll reach in. Kind of just hold it and pinch it with my fingers until I get that loop set on top and cinch it down with some tension. And I've got a tie out on this point now as well. It makes the tarp look a little ugly, but functionally speaking, it helps make things a lot more uh, rigid. So now with these loops that have been tied onto the tarp, I take one of my classic uh, six to eight foot lengths of rope and with this rope, I already have a prusik tied on, I can see that. But I just loop that, take the loop of the guy line, kind of set it through. Just hold the tension free. Of course, it's a jumbled mess. There we go. 
Like I say, I've already got a prostate sitting on the line there. But I want to just feed the end through the loop. Make sure the prusik is clear. Now I'm cinched on, and because I've got that prusik on there, I put a tent peg in the ground, hook the prusik on, and just adjust the prusik along the line and apply tension. I'll do that now. Okay. So just pound in a tent peg. Make sure that it's in there good and solid. Slide my prusik down to the point that it's needed. Hook it onto the tent peg. Then I just take my line, slide the prusik back along that line and apply tension. It's locked in place. I'll do the same on the other side. So as you can see, I've now guy lined out both sides. I know it starts to take on a very unusual shape, if you will, but that's okay. It's more about the functionality than anything else. I can see I got to apply a bit of tension on that prusik. It's a bit of sag in the roof there. So but that's easy enough. I just come along to this prusik. Slide it back that way. It makes everything a little bit more taut. So now there's only one thing left to really do. And that's, I need a stick that's about six and a half foot in length. And I need to put that with the base of it right there. And I'm pushing up. So it just kind of lifts up this entrance. So I'm just going to go and find that stick now and uh, see what I can come across and just set it in place. And then I'll show you the inside and the outside of the shelter fully completed. Okay, so I just had to go for a little stroll, but I think that stick right there looks like it'll be a prime candidate. Amply long enough, looks like a straight stout stick. So I'm going to harvest that, I won't bother recording that, but I'm going to harvest that, like say about six and a half foot in length, bring it back to the camp. Okay, so the shelter's fully together now. I can say there's always things you can do with it. Of, like in this area, there's still a tiny bit of sag. I potentially could do the same kind of thing where I put a cone on the inside of there, did a tie out and it would just kind of, let's see if I can grab it, just kind of pull everything out and keep it all flush and it would square everything up. I don't feel that that's critical with the uh, wind conditions that I'm facing today. But amply big enough shelter for one person with lots and lots of gear or two people if you had to. Like I say, I'll take a peek on the inside now. So you can see, I don't know, maybe you can't. I'll switch the camera on to low lighting and see if I can get a good shot on the inside. Okay, so I just put the camera on low lighting. Hopefully that helps a bit, but... You can see the tarp fully covers the floor, creates a significant amount of space, easily big enough to have two people sleep in there. Like I say, a bit tight when you had gear with you, but but the good part is how sealed in you are. You can say the only real point of entry for any type of moisture is going to be right at this front entrance. That's really the key point. And you could tie this down right here. Tie these two tie points together, if you will, to kind of lock that down. And to stop any of the moisture coming in, got the ridge line running above. You could easily put, say, like a poncho tarp or, you know, even a regular tarp, but uh, just over the entrance and create a little awning for the shelter. That wouldn't be a difficult thing to achieve either. But there you have it, shelter's completed. I uh, forgot my charger when it comes to recharging my battery, so I don't know how much longer this video is going to be able to be, but I'll try to pack in as much as I can. There's a whole big thing other than this I wanted to show, but I don't think I got the battery life, so I'll push that off to another video, but 
Either way, I hope you like Prototype X Shelter. I, I don't know of a name to give it, but it's um, the latest shelter creation. So even though my batteries are kind of getting close to the end of things, if you will, I'll at least throw in the uh, ground mat, and that way you guys can see how big this shelter is. I know it's always difficult when you see things in video to know, like, all right, well, how big of a space is that? You know, how much shelter did that create? So I'll toss this in, and uh, then I'll probably start to wrap this video up. Um, and like I say, I want to make sure I kind of get my end scenes and everything else before the battery's gone. So uh, I, I hope you liked the video. Sorry I didn't bring along my charger to kind of keep everything going. Normally I like to do the full length videos. Either way, I'll still kind of carry on with my camp. I just won't be able to catch it on camera. So uh, yeah, I'll toss this in and show you how much space it takes up, yeah? Okay, so I threw the uh, ground mat in there. No, just a thermo rest pad, one of the Mylar ones. And you can see there's plenty of room. You could easily have two people sleep side by each with each other. And, you know, there's a small area that you could put a bag, maybe, maybe two small bags or one really large one up front. But like I say, because of the entrance and given the fact that it's kind of not fully sealed, you could end up seeing moisture on your bag, which would be unfortunate. But as it goes for sleeping in the back area, that wouldn't be a problem. The moisture is not going to get to you back there. And so, you know, it'd have to be a fairly monsoon rain. But either way, it gives you hopefully an idea of the size and scope of the shelter. And then, like I say, I'm going to kind of wrap up this video now because my batteries say I'm at 14%. So, and this is the last battery I got. So, sorry I didn't uh, go on with the full video, but, you know, such is life, right? So, hey there, fellow YouTubers. So, it was Frank Bush here again. So thanks for joining me on another one of my bushcraft adventures. I really am sorry that I forgot the charger and I've cut the video short. Like I said, I've got a whole other thing I wanted to show and I'll have to push that off to another video. But uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I hope you like uh, Prototype X. Cheers.